Celebrating entrepreneurs and creativity. Talking business pleasure, real life get together. Join us here. Hello, listeners, and thank you for coming back and tuning into the Creative Entrepreneurs Podcast. You guys know how we do it, where we turn creativity into careers and passion into profit. I'm super, super excited today to be joined by the one and only Sean Costley from Route 36. Now, for those of you who do not know Route 36, they are the amazing team behind this podcast. So those graphics that you see, um, the amazing sound, you know, that sound that that's making me sound all lovely and sexy and everything. Yeah, that's Route 36. That's that's producing that sound and, and everything that you see with this podcast. And honestly, this podcast would not have happened without this amazing team. So too kind. <laughs> of course, Sean, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad that you've you've joined us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been an honor to um, take part in it so far and to come on and talk to you today. I'm looking forward to it, see what we can, uh, what gems we can give and hopefully give out some information that's going to help people ultimately. Good, good. And that's what we want. So, um, so Sean, talk to me around what you do. Um, so good I know question. a lot of people would just see kind of maybe like mm. you know graphic designer or yeah. whatever but i know that there and just being here there's so much more Absolutely. so talk to me about what you do no yeah it's a really good place to start so route 36 is um it's ultimately it's a combination of really talented people i know that that might sound a little bit cliche but that that's what it is and our um our speciality is in the marketing sector so we deliver um deliverables from right across the creative spectrum and into uh, the operational activation side of marketing. So what that actually sounds like in reality is on the creative side of things, that could be anything from um, brand design, right from concept, right the way through to delivery. So, you know, 2D graphic design, 3D design in terms of like, um, you know, retail uh, shopping centers, uh, uh, window displays, that sort of thing, right the way through to um, videography, animation, motion graphics, um, and then right the way through content creation into uh, what I'd call the sort of the distribution side of, of creativity. So paid spend uh, management on social media, the, the management of social media channels um, for, for small and, and large companies, um, right the way through to like the analytics side of things and you know the creation of websites and um, the monitoring and tracking of performance across websites. So it's a little bit of a mouthful, but we, we operate essentially right the way across the, the full creative spectrum in terms of um, the relevant services that, that you can get from us and, and that people need to operate or create um, businesses in 2021, essentially. Um, and then the execution side of things is what I would describe as like on the activation side of things so a lot of um, marketeers need to need the ability to distribute and um, purchase uh, point of sale items and get all of this uh, material delivered to stores in a really clean and organized fashion and that's one of the the our key USPs um, here at Route 36 so half of our team is split onto what we call the logic side of the business and they specialize in deeply understanding um, you know the layout and the spatial requirements of, of retail estates. Um, we've developed software that enables marketing teams and, and creatives to to distribute that um, set of information in a way that nobody else has so far. So yeah, a little bit of a mouthful, but um, wow. but there's a lot that we yeah. do, you know, from from what from what you've wow. said. But best place to start is probably check out our website and have a look at the different services that we do. Wow. That's incredible. And I know that you just, what, what you've mentioned there is just a, a breadth of things mm. that you do. And I, I kind of want to, why Route 36? What, what, what's that name about? Like, where did that come from? Really, really, really good question. So um, myself and the two co-founders of, of Route 36, we've been friends since, um, Jesus, since like 10, 10 years old kind of wow. thing. And we went to school together, went to, uh, college, uni, all, all of that, and we worked with, with each other for about 10, 15 years or so. So it's, we've known, our foundation goes way, 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 way back. And um, when we when we started or we decided to come up with a new business, we was a little bit lost as, as to, what to what to call it. And we was thinking of different, you know, 
it felt like a little bit of a way out of the situation that we was in. So we was thinking different route destinations and the just different people may have heard different stories on this in terms mm. of where we got the Route 36 names. But anyone who really, really knows um, us at Route 36 will know where it's from. So one of our friends, um, Jimmy Davis, who used to play for Manchester United when he was younger. Mm-hmm. He tragically passed away in a, in a car accident when he was 21. Mm-hmm. And he used to wear the number 36 mm-hmm. on, on his shirt. That's, that's what number he was. So that number is obviously really special to us. Like a lot of our friends have got the number tattooed on mm-hmm. them. And, you know, it's really, really special, really special guy and special to us still to this day. And we wanted to kind of honor his legacy and kind wow. of in our own way and kind of carry that carry that name on a, a bit. You know, obviously everyone thinks of Route 36 and they think Route 66. Mm. Um, but we wanted to to mm. honor that name and honor that that number and keep it keep it going. Yeah, that's magical. Wow. Respect, respect, <laughs> respect. I, I love that. So um, you, you mentioned that you started with two other co-founders. Mm. Um, so I've got a couple of questions for that. Okay. <laughs> um, so number one, are those co-founders still in the business? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Great. And number two, how important is it to get into um, get into a go go into business with people that you know and trust and what what other kind of things so say for example someone wants to start their business and you know they want to start it with somebody else whether it's a friend or mm. a family member or or something what other kind of like tips that you would give them what should they be doing or thinking about when they're looking to kind of do a joint venture with, with somebody wow else? very 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 good question now um i remember so Shout out to the Rasta to brothers because they're the, the two guys who we're talking about. Like I said, Joe has been my best friend since we was like 10, 11, and Jack's uh, Joe's younger brother, and you know we've we've grew up together. So, one of the things I would say if you're f- considering starting a business with somebody else, first and foremost is is um is trust, mm. um and you you need to be able to trust these people or whoever it is you're going into business with in a way deeper than I can, I can ever explain, if that makes sense, as in because what business does, it brings out the best and the worst in everybody. Um, and you need to be able to understand that when think, when times get tough or, you know, um, you know, when the chips are really down, um, you, you, under, you deeply understand that person who you get into business with because money gets involved. Things can think. There's lots of things that can, um, you know, fracture a relationship. So, so yeah, you ultimately have to trust the people you're getting into into business with. And I think what really helped us was one, the fact that we kind of knew each other's characters deeply before work. So, mm. so as as friends, and pe- people can say it's obviously dangerous to get into business with friends, but we also had. Um, experience actually working together as well so we knew for, for example we knew each other's strengths in work mm. and out of work mm. if that makes sense so i think we was kind of blessed a bit in that way to be perfectly honest because we we had a bit of a a chance to actually work alongside with each other for like 10 years so mm. we so we really got to see each other's strengths and weaknesses in the work environment as well as kind of externally so so yeah absolutely trust the people you're getting into business with um and crucially as well i, I think um Obviously, this, this will depend on what type of business you're going to create, but trying to ensure you've got skill sets that complement each other mm. and also skill sets that kind of overlap each mm. other a little bit is um, is what I would advise, simply because as you grow and as you scale, um, you what helped us was the fact that the three of us could kind, we could all kind of do the core services that we mm-hmm. offered when we started, but we all kind of had our own kind of unique strengths also that enabled us to grow other areas of the business. But, you know, if one of us was to get ill or somebody else needed to, f- f- you know, fill in in a certain role, we could have quite easily because mm. we was all capable of doing the same thing as mm. well as some different things. So I think that was a um, a really good help for us. And yeah, that's something I'd advise as well, trying mm. to mix your mix mm. the skill sets and overlap where you can. Good, love that, love that. Um, some of the other things that I would probably kind of add on to that is where possible, make sure you've got a working agreement, just listing out like different roles mm. and different responsibilities and who's doing what and who takes what. And because it's so important. Absolutely, like. absolutely. And and you know what, it's just really, really good point because <laughs> those type of things, and, and I think this is because like, while well, we were so lucky, it's because we deeply trusted each other mm. so much, those things we, we really didn't think, we didn't mm. even have to think about. 
Um, as in, you know, is it going to be equal shares or this, that, you know, and those, mm-hmm. those things that could easily get, you know, you could fall out over quite quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but you, you're absolutely right. Like, for, as, as advice to people kind of getting into business, document these mm-hmm. things. It's, it's really important. 100%. You know, you don't want it to, uh, you know, to be any misunderstandings. Yeah. Like looking back, I think it's the fairest way to yeah. do it. Yeah. And the, and the last thing that I would probably say as well is therapists. Like, mm. when you going into business with someone, it's like a relationship. It's like you're literally, you know, going into business and spending most of your time with that person and there's going to be disagreements, there's going to be, you know, different viewpoints and it's about how do you respect and, you know, respectfully work towards different viewpoints and that diversity of thought and move forward. And one of the things that I've learnt is having a therapist at some point to to Mm. help you talk with one another and you know just work things out and i know a lot of business people who have got joint ventures with each other with each other has therapists to help those relationships and it it actually really works so i you know that's some a tip that i would probably give as well i might have to take that one on (laughs) get someone to get us to talk to each other (laughs) um but no it's um it's 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 lovely that Mm. you actually grew up with a set of friends and that then you decided that you was going into business with mm. them and creating, you know, this route, this 36, this beast that we see today. And I think a lot of people would really underestimate kind of the operation that you're, that you're running. Absolutely. Um, just, just speak to us about some of the clients that you've mm. worked with and... Um, yeah, yeah, that's... Um it's true, you know, just following on from the, the point you were saying, we're not too kind of overstated, if I'm honest. We we, we like to kind of operate under the radar a little bit. and um, Not we, today. We're uh, coming out. We, we are coming, coming out yeah, today. Abs- 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 <laughs> absolutely, yeah. But, um, you know, we don't shout too loud. Um, and I think that's a bit of a reflection in our characters, believe it or not. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, we, we, we kind of, we do what we do and we do it really well. Mm. And people who know us know we do it really well um but the next sort of three four years i guess uh, plan you know and in terms of where we're heading it's more about getting out and t- telling more people and grow you know growing kind of outside of where we currently are but um yeah in terms of answer to your question regards clients we we're really really fortunate to to work with some you know sort of major major clients across the uk and europe and you know worldwide really and and i think that's come from um the experience that we had before we even started Route 36. So, um, you know, we, we worked to really senior positions in, in our previous roles, um, you know, previous companies before we started Route 36. So when we started, um, you know, a lot of our peers were were now are now like, you know, senior directors mm. and, you know, MDs and, mm. you know, owners and, and senior stakeholders within within companies within our industry. So and we earned the respect of these people. So, so when you, when we started on our own, it ena- enabled us to kind of platform at quite a, mm. quite a senior level. So we was able to go in and service clients. Like, you know, um, so right now we work with people uh, like um, sort of like JD Sports. We work with um, uh, companies like HH Global. We work with ASDA. We work with um, sort of like Primark. Wow. Um, you know, Co-op. Wow. Like lots, lots, and lots. Lots yeah. and lots of different companies, um, mm. Wilkinsons, Yumbo in Europe. Mm. Um, we were having conversations with companies in Australia. We worked with companies in uh, Bangladesh, you know, people like ZXY International, um, companies in America, like, like mm. all, all over so, now. It's um, mm. it's pretty extensive, really. Yeah, exciting that is. Like, and some big, big brands, and it's exciting stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. It's um, it is a little bit mind blowing to be honest. As in, um, we've only been going sort of four years. We're just entering our fifth year, so to be you know privileged enough to be servicing these clients um, at this stage, it's something we don't mm. you know we don't take for granted. We know it's hard work that's got us to this point. Mm. Um, you know, nothing's been give, gifted, if that makes sense. It's been um, it's been hard right. work to get to this point. Yeah, absolutely. But but yeah, it's. What is opportunity we're we're, mm. we're blessed enough to have, and uh, yeah, we're look, looking forward to keeping it going and seeing where it can go from here. Yeah, amazing! I absolutely love that. I think it's incredible. So, what challenges have you faced along the way? And I know obviously running a business is difficult, mm. and often we you get know. presented with lots of challenges as business owners. Mm. And you know, twenty twenty was a massive challenge for 
many, many businesses. And I know some businesses just couldn't operate and other businesses excelled and Absolutely. used it as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, but I just want to, you know, probably a two part question. So the first question, what challenges have you had in your five, five years mm -hmm. of, of operation? And then the second question, which is like the, the second part to it is, did COVID impact okay. you and or for the for the worse or for the better? Okay. So challenges, I think the key challenges were um, going through the various growth stages. Um, and what I mean by that is, so when we first started, there was uh, three of us. And essentially what we did was, um, you know, contract work, you know, consult, freelance, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, we was doing that for about 12 months, 18 months. And we, so on day one, we had a vision of what, Route 36 was going was going to be, but we knew on day one it was probably going to take us three four years to get there. Um, like the Rossiters, as people were the, the meticulous planners, and it, a lot fortunately a lot of that's rubbed off on me. But um, but yeah, so Don't we I know it. I know yeah. So we knew where we wanted to get to um, really early, but we but we knew we had to kind of tread a certain path. So one of the first um, challenges was um, creating funds. So like we we're completely independent. We've got no backers. We we didn't. We know we haven't come from wealth in terms of our background, if that makes sense. As in, you know, we all we all saved up a small amount of money wow. um, to, you know, to basically if it didn't work out, so we could pay our bills for sort of five six months. That that was the plan. That was the financial plan. If you see what I mean, as in me, Jack and Joe. Um, so we gave ourselves a six month chance. If that makes sense, we need to make it pay within six months. Um, and so we started, so that was the initial challenge, just to literally get it off the ground and um, then trust our gut and trust our instinct that we could make it work. And then the initial challenge was then creating capacity in terms of financial capacity to grow. And what I mean by that is as in, we could have, I'm sure for a long time, kind of continued to um, offer our services on a freelance or consultancy basis and earn a lot of money and um, mm. paid ourselves really, really well. Um, you know, because of the previous experience that we'd managed to build up, but we knew that would only ever be um, us free doing something. Mm -hmm. We wanted to be able to grow the business to a point where it's more than just us free. Mm. Um, so the first challenge was creating that financial capacity and what that essentially looks like is don't spend it any money, mm -hmm. save every penny you've got, work in coffee shops, work in libraries, wherever you can get free, whatever, you know, take the opportunity to do that. Um, and that was tough for the first sort of 12, 18 months, um, but that's what we did. So we did that, kind of saved every penny. And then um, the next challenge then became growth. So, okay, we need offices, we need a place to harvest a team and create culture and, and create, pass on to the next level, if that makes sense. So mm. it was then recruiting the team, it was growing those services. So we then we moved from like a transition business into um, like a, a creative offering as well. Mm. That's when we introduced those services and then, um, you know, creating the team to deliver those services. That was obviously a challenge. Um, and then uh, I think kind of going through those var various stages threw, threw up its own challenges. So that kind of took us up to, um, to, to towards the end of 2019. And we grew from, say, three people to about 11 people, I think, by the end of 2019. Wow. So, wow. so that, gro yeah, that growth was in about 12 months because the first 18 months was just the three of us mm. saving money, if that makes sense. So then COVID hit, which... Just before we, we answer the COVID okay. question, there was something in there that you kind of mentioned initially, which was the first 18 months okay. you, you guys saved up, you kind of living on the, the bread line, yeah. as it were, and sacrificed and just knew that you had to make this Absolutely. venture work. I know that there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there thinking about making that plunge or making that step, yeah. but may have some commitments. So at that stage, did you have commitments in terms of maybe, I don't know, um, um, partner, children, house? Like what was your yeah, yeah. status at that stage and what was your thinking when you... Really good question, really good question. So one of the um, things, getting that financial stability and, and getting you all onto a level playing field kind of thing, super, super, super important. And again, the, those guys are meticulous planners. And what, what we said was, um, so before we even started the business, we said, what is the minimum amount of money that we could survive on? Wow. So, and, and that, that and we knew that had to be equal across mm. the board. So it couldn't be that person can survive in this, but that person could mm. survive in that and that person. We said, what's the minimum amount of money that we can all survive on? And 
And, you know, uh, I think Joe had two children at the time. I think Jack might have had a child on the way. I haven't got no children. Um, but we worked out a number that what it was and it was much lower than the money that we was earning at the time. So we said, okay, so if we can earn that amount of money, that will that will pay the bills, that will keep the lights on, that will, you know, buy the kids mm. something at Christmas, you know, the real, real, real basics. Um, but I'm taught, we, we went in on that mm. and I remember Jack, for example, like buying... Um, you know, like six months worth of like glue roll and, <laughs> and uh, toothpaste and, and stuff, that, you know, but mm. buying things in bulk yeah. to, to get wow. to get a cost saving. So yeah. we, we really, really but, looked at it. Mm. But that's such an important point. Like, I think when you are going into business, so if mm. there's any, any listeners thinking about going into business, you have to do your personal budgets and you have Absolutely. to work out what is the minimum spend that mm. I can live off. So to speak. It's essential. It's essential because um, this, yeah, you, you need to know what you know, what your outgoings are and what your in, you know what your income is. And sorry, what your your income is going to be variable. But if mm. if you can control what your outgoings are, that's a that's mm. a very very good place to start. So you know, literally, like the, I remember the guys selling cars and we downgraded in terms of cars. So I need to wow. get rid of this and get rid of that and just just completely shed anything that wasn't essential. Um, and then saved money. So, so two things. So we got our outgoings down to an absolute minimum, um, and we then um, worked out you know, what what that value we needed to to earn to to kind of keep every keep it going. Mm. Um, so once we was at that point, um, we we kind of knew our targets. And so the variable was then how much money can you make, how much money can you generate, because we know mm. what what the what the costs are, what the base costs are. Um, so yeah, from that point, um, I lost. I lost my train of thought. What was the original <laughs> question? I forgot what the question it was. was no, I was just. Um, we was just talking about kind of budgeting initially mm. and making sure that you you've got enough funds and working out your outgoings and and incomings. But I think you 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 more than you know answered that question. And it's such a good good point. And I think everybody should note that down. You know, before you even think about going into business write down your personal budget spend and how much you can live off. But fast forward to 2020 okay. and COVID hits and the, wor the world for many industries, particularly the creative industries, mm. kind of falls to its knees and, Absolutely. and stops. Um, and those that survived or thrived are those kind of, in, or, or those organisations that were occupying the online space mm. or, you know, supporting um, others. H how did COVID impact you and what did you do to pivot? Because, you know, you've, mm. you've just before COVID or during COVID, you, you grew from, what, 3 to 15? Correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. So something happened. So talk to me about that. Yeah, yeah, good, good point. So um, in terms of how did it affect us so we had grew from three to 15 and, and the numbers were split pretty evenly down the middle in terms of the two sides of the business so down the, the logic and the creative sides of the business um now thank god we did what we did in terms of strategy and we moved um we grew the logic side of the business from essentially people paying for me joe jack you know ollie's time um to be to go and sit in someone's head office and operate to um, to offering software as a service in terms of we kind of migrated a lot of those skills out of our head into software that people can pay for as, mm. as a service. Um, and that was a decision that was made you know, quite a while back, but you know, le leading up towards um, 2020. And, and the reason I say that is because, so as 2020 came in was when we was first starting to, um, we got to early traction, so post office or one of the early adopters of the raw software platform. Um, and that was sort of back end of um, 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and then it kind of grew from there, different different clients kind of pick, picking up the software platform, which generated income for us. And it generated inco income for us in a way that didn't mean we needed to be sat in someone's office. Mm -hmm which was obviously, you know, super crucial from a COVID situation. Um, and also on that side of the business, what it, it, what, it, what it also did, as in COVID then coming in, it forced marketeers and there were everybody, every business in the world to sharpen the pencil mm. and get, um, 
control of budgets and everybody isn't even more so than they ever have been mm-hmm. and you know, everyone's trying to save money but even that's been intensified by covid so if there is a way that you can save money in your marketing spend people are looking mm-hmm. for it um and what the raw platform does is it does exactly that it can it takes time out to, time and money out of the operational side and out of the kind of purchasing side of 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 um marketing accounts so you know companies that are spending millions on, on point of sale they can save significant amount of money with this sounds like a shameless plug but mm. it's it's the truth and it really mm. can and the reason why i'm saying that is we we see uplift in the amount of because of covid people trying to save money they was looking for tools that would save them money and mm. that created um a need for the for right. the software that we was actually providing so we've seen an uplift on that side of the business um, while we seen a downturn on the creative side of the business because the mm. creative side of the business that was hit the most hard as in events were closed mm. so a lot of our videographers and you know animators and people that were out either you know shooting film in on set you know on location or in, in offices or mm. wherever that side of thing was hit most hard because no one could interact no one could get close to each other you know what what's 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 funny actually because obviously I've known you for some time now and we've worked together on many projects um and there was the one project literally just yeah, before right. covid we were working on doing i think it was the chamber awards that's and right we yeah, were working chamber like awards. literally we were you know you guys were sorting out all the digital presentation mm. for us it was going to be an amazing performance that we were going to do in front of 1400 people at the icc you know when we all had it all planned out and <laughs> i think the performance was on the thursday and we've been working on this for probably the last, I don't know, the, a month prior. Yeah, yeah about four weeks. And yeah. then um, I think it was on the Monday they phoned and was like, this performance isn't happening <laughs> on Thursday. And we were like, what? And um, and I just remember calling you saying, oh, it's, it's, it's not happening. It's not happening. And um, what's interesting now is we'll, we'll probably end up do the, doing the performance in 2022. But that's crazy. What we had planned and the stuff that you've done for for twenty twenty is probably now outdated. Of course, like it's what the world has moved, moved that so quickly. Much, yeah. <laughs> but in the same sentence, stood still. Mm. Um, but on, on, a, on a digital landscape, the world has kind of just moved on because we were forced to do it so quickly um, that what we probably had planned, we, we probably would need to to rethink. So I, I just think for me, like it just highlights how the creative industries in terms of kind of like your events and mm. you know all the stuff that you would do to support events and 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 that industry was just completely it's com- wiped out just, just like that just like that yeah com- completely wiped out so if you think um yeah you know an event that goes on it will create need for photographers for videographers mm. for events planners for you know, mar- you know, mm. ev- there's so many um, you know careers that get put on hold, I guess, or, or agencies that get put on stop when that event can't happen. And it's the same thing for, like, like I say, a lot of our customers are uh, um, our brand side, you know, or, or retail, retailer led, and um, it's the same thing. You know, when people can't go out and spend money in store, that mm. that just it just turns everything off. Mm. So. Yeah, it was a t- it was a tough time on that side of things, and um, yeah, and and slowly then things started to come back to life, as in you know what we was able to do, um, mm. in, you know, in terms of like COVID restrictions and what have you, slowly got lifted, and um, we was able to off- offer different services. But just going back to one of your earlier sort of points, and like how did we how did we pivot? So there was a few things we did during mm-hmm. um, during that period. So obviously, um, you can only control what you can control. Mm. Um, and one of the things we realized was people were just, um, even if you could operate in a COVID safe way, um, emotionally, I don't think people were ready to Mm. operate in a COVID safe way. Um, and as in people coming into their environment or coming into, you know, their space and and shooting or do, you know, doing different things. So we did this, Mm. We, we thought, okay, well, if we can't go on location, if we can't go out to video, why don't we use the skills, the know-how uh, that we've got to um, one of the mm. other services that were popping off during during COVID. So mm. podcasts were going through the roof, you know, podcasts have been on the rise for a long time, but I think they, they got amplified because mm. people needed content, people needed something to listen to during COVID. So we pivoted in that respect and, you know, we didn't do podcasts Sweet. before that. So we said, okay, well, 
let's combine all of those skills that we've got and get creative with it and try and come up with another solution that we that keeps people in a job mm. and keeps keeps the lights on so to speak so so yeah we we invested in a little bit of equipment that we didn't have but um, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit <laughs> yeah and but, but and use the space so mm. so we, what that's created is a place that other people can come to if they're not comfortable with people coming to them mm. um so yeah and now, yeah. We, now we're doing podcasts well that brings me on to my <laughs> next point which is collaboration mm. and I, I, you know we we both know that collaboration is huge and it's part of the reason why we're both kind of sitting here today and just kind of I, I remember actually first kind of coming into contact with you I remember like putting out a tweet you know I love Twitter um, just asking for a you know a, a video upgrader or a team that can support some of the stuff that I was doing and Casey Bailey shout out Casey um, message saying our oh, route 36 you'll you look no further so i was thinking what's casey what's talking about about i'll look no further like it's a bit cocky isn't it? um but I, I remember speaking i remember just calling you initially and just immediately you just got you was just like it was just like you was inside my head you just mm. knew like what i was thinking and what i wanted um so we've since worked on a few various of projects you know you've done stuff for candy girl um you kind of did all the the kind of graphics for you know oh, APAA's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. event which was insane like everyone was like nah the graphics were just out of this world <laughs> um and and then we kind of discussed obviously doing collaborating mm -hmm. on on this podcast and listeners I've got to be honest like when I first wanted to do this podcast or was going to do it I was like the best thing for me to do because I'm not really sure about the production side mm. is to collaborate with somebody who gets me who understands me and who probably knows kind of what I want to achieve and I, I gave Sean a call and we sat down and we discussed about how this collaboration would look yeah and how you know we can support each other and of course um you you came on board here we are now i'm going to be honest like i thought it would just be a couple of mics a dslr camera just watching <laughs> us and like we'll put it on a platform and that would be it but you have like blown my <laughs> expectations completely out the water like i'm talking the space in itself like mm. ugh, if you if you listeners can see this space and I'm I'm hoping that we'll do something to, to help yeah, you to push it. Yeah, see yeah. the space. But if you can see the space, it's incredible. And anybody that comes into the space is always well. And I you know, just blew me away. And then the equipment Thank you, appreciate that. The equipment is incredible. And just we're not even gonna speak about the critical planning just yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll come, come on, on to that. that. We'll come on to that. But it's just that the the detail mm. and the project management and just, just the whole thing has made me super gassed about this podcast and yeah, that's what we do man I um appreciate it so just going back to the question like how important is collaboration to you and to the business it's super 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 important because you know what do they say collaboration is the new innovation kind of mm. thing it's um it's not too many ways to innovate these days you've got to be really really on it to come up with something genuinely new um but yeah collaboration is absolutely it's, it's critical and um not only do we look for you know like minded people businesses you know to collaborate with and you know if we, if we can help each other out it's, it's amazing you know it's obviously win-win um I, I think it's like you have to uh, embody that as, as a business as well mm. so it's, it's, it's one of our key you know, core values kind of thing in terms of collaborating. So it's super important to us as an individually as a team within the company, um, you know, collaborating with people outside the company. It's, I, I, to be honest, I, I don't see how you can get on too well without collaborating mm. these days because not everybody can do anything, everything. And I think everybody who says they do everything is, is, mm, is mm. you know, there's a, maybe, maybe but mm. um but yeah I, I think true collaboration mm. is is uh it's, it's what everyone's trying mm. to trying to achieve it I, what i would say is is find the right people mm. to do it with and the Definitely. people that, that complement um yeah. your skill sets or the, or the gaps that you've, mm. you've identified Let's get them. Join us here. Elevating